Hello, my name is Mariela, and I have been working for Girl Scouts Heart of Michigan for 13 years. My favorite Girl Scout cookies are the trefoil. Hi, my name is Camilla, and I was a Girl Scout uh, Daisy through sophomore. I was the Girl Scout through Daisy through cadet, and my favorite Girl Scout cookies are tag along. Hi, my name is Tammy. I'm a junior at Girl Scout, and I have been in Girl Scout since I was in second grade. My favorite Girl Scout cookies are Samoa's. Today, we will talk to you all about the 109th birthday of Girl Scouts. Every year on March 12th, all, girls, all Girl Scouts across the nation celebrate the Girl Scout birthday. On March 12th, 1912, Juliet Gordon Law officially registered 18 girls and Girl Scouts in Savannah, Georgia. Juliet Gordon Law gathered everyone on that day to share what she had learned abroad about a new outdoor and educational program for youth. And this is how the Girl Scout movement began. With Juliet Gordon Lowe, these first Girl Scouts blazed trails and redefined what was possible for themselves and for girls everywhere. Girl Scout Week is celebrated each March, starting with Girl Scout Sunday and ending with Girl Scout Sabbath on a Saturday. And it always includes Girl Scout's birthday on March 12th. Girl Scout Sunday and Girl Scout Sabbath give girls an opportunity to attend their places of worship and be recognized as a Girl Scout. In the slide, you are able to see the plans that Girl Scout Heart of Michigan posted in our Facebook page to challenge yourself to be the best Girl Scout you can be. And of course, celebrate the Girl Scout birthday on Friday, March 12th, the anniversary of the very first troop meeting in 1912. You can celebrate one day or celebrate all week long. Here are some other pictures of Juliet Gordon Lowe with some Girl Scouts and some other leaders. It looks like these Girl Scouts were being taught how to make some knots by the Girl Scout leader. Juliet Gordon Lowe was born on October 31st in Savannah, Georgia. Born as Juliet McGill Kenzie Gordon. She was affectionately known as Daisy and she came from a long line of strong and independent women. Where did Juliet Gordon Lowe live as a child? She lived in what we now call the Juliet Gordon Lowe birthplace, which is a house that has been a gathering place for girls for more than 100 years. For the past two years, there has been work to enhance access to the house by renovating areas in order to be able to serve all guests that come by. Girl Scouts of the USA assumed ownership of Juliet Gordon Lowe birthplace from the Gordon family in 1953. The birthplace has been designated a National Historic Landmark and it welcomes about 30,000 guests per year. The picture on the left is the main entrance of Juliet's house. And the picture on the right shows the same entrance, but many, many years ago. So not only was the first Girl Scout troop formed in 1912, there were also other things going on around the world at that time. And these are some of them. The Republic of China was founded. The Summer Olympics were held in Stockholm, Sweden. Albert Berry made the first parachute jump from a moving airplane. New Mexico admitted as 47th state. Arizona admitted as a 48th state. Alaska became an organized U.S. territory and Fenway Park opened with a game between the Boston Red Sox and New York Yankees, who were known at the time as the Highlanders.
the Titanic sinks on its first voyage in the North Atlantic. Harriet Quimby becomes the first woman to fly across the English Channel and the first U.S. postage stamp featuring airplane is released. Our Girl Scout law and our Girl Scout promise have changed a bit since Juliet Gordon Lowe founded Girl Scouts in 1912. What do you think of the Girl Scout promise and the Girl Scout law? On my honor, I will try to do your duty to God and your country, to help other people at all times to obey the Girl Scout laws. The Girl Scout law. A Girl Scout's honor is to be trusted. A Girl Scout is loyal. A Girl Scout's duty is to be useful and to help others. A Girl Scout was a friend to all and has to test to every other Girl Scout no matter what social class she may belong. A Girl Scout is courteous. A Girl Scout keeps herself pure. A Girl Scout was a friend to animals. A Girl Scout obeys orders. A Girl Scout is cheerful. A Girl Scout is thrifty. Badges were also pretty different back then than what they are now. The Georgia Historical Society has a collection of Juliet Gordon Lowe's personal Girl Scout badges. Let's see if you can match the badge pictures in this slide to the name of the badge. The names and descriptions for the badges are from a Girl Scout handbook from 1917. Can you guess? Do these badges look like any of the badges you have now in your vest or sash? The first one is scribe. The requirements are to write 12 news articles, preferably one a month, not to exceed 500 words each, on events that come within the observation of the scouts that are not public news, as for instance, school athletic events, entertainment to scouts, church or school, neighborhood incidents, etc. The second one is dairy. Know how to feed, kill, and dress poultry. Test five cows for 10 days each with Babcock tests and proper reports. And the third one, civics and citizen badge. The requirements, the requirements are to tell the history and object of the Declaration of Independence, be able to name the officers of the President's Cabinet and their portfolios. Boat train. The requirements are to be able to row, pull, scull, or steer a boat, land a boat and make fast, and state directions by sun and stars. Athletics. The requirements are know and be able to teach 20 popular games. So we're not in 1912 anymore. The badges look a little bit different, don't they? We posted here five, those same five badges and what they look like today. Number one is scribe. Number two, dairy. We kind of searched around and we found a fun patch, but we could not find a badge for dairy. Number three, civic citizen badge. Number four, the orienteering badge was the one that we found to be the closest badge to the boatswain that we showed you earlier. Number five, the good sportsmanship badge was the, also the closest badge that we found to the athletics badge that we showed you earlier. And just a little more about Girl Scout history. Take a look at the uniforms in this picture. These are actually different styles of uniforms that we have had since 1912. What do you think? Which uniform looks like the one you have now? Ask your leader or maybe your mom or grandma and find out what uniform they had if they were a part of the Girl Scout program growing up. These uniforms have really changed from when Girl Scouts was founded, haven't they? These are some other ideas for you to celebrate the Girl Scout birthday. Throw a virtual birthday party. 
celebrating 109 years. Sing happy birthday. Get back to the basics by learning a new Girl Scout song or game, doing an old-fashioned skit, or hosting a troop meeting as it would have been 100 years ago. Play old-time games, hopscotch, blind man's buff, and other games from the Victorian era. Daisy's Days. You can embroider a daisy flower using an outline or cross stitch. Perhaps start a journal and write down your favorite memories of some troop meetings, trips, or outings that you have had with your troop. Research how many successful women wore Girl Scouts when they were your age. Or try your cooking skills by making an early Girl Scout cookie recipe. Here, Shell, is an early Girl Scout recipe. Mm, sounds pretty good to me. It sure does. So how will you celebrate the 109th birthday of Girl Scouts this year? Please share how you're celebrating with your troop and email us at marketing at gshom.org. Thank, Thank you for joining us today. today. Happy, Happy birthday, Girl Scouts.